Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Lillian. Thank you, Professor Capello, for this excellent opportunity to be here today and talk about my work together with Professor Marco Zezia Huda that could not be here today. But I will try to present uh, something about my recent results and research. And today I will talk about this multimodal coupling that we are working uh, that involves the liquid chromatography, the ICPMS MS, that is the indu inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, and the high resolution mass spectrometry. This coupling is made online to identify biomolecules containing heteroatoms and novel species. Uh, for example, some biomolecule uh, binding phosphorus also of sulfur. And in this line, we are working in the, the application of this multimodal coupling to identify biomolecules containing heteroatoms in the soybean somatic embryogenesis that I, I will explain later for you. Uh, added with gold nanoparticles and silver nanoparticles <coughs> and also the application of this multimodal coupling to identify uh, novel organocenicals, for example, novel species of binding or arsenic in marine animal samples. It's kind of different studies, but I, I, I think that is, is possible to applic the application of this kind of multimodal coping in medical studies and medicine. And here I have the basic configuration of this multimodal coping. So uh, I have the, we have the HPLC and after the column we, we use this split valve that divides the flux between the ICPMS that will have signal of total phosphorus or sulfur or arsenic and uh, part of the flux go to, to the orb trap, then I have the signal of biomolecules. And if we overlap in the chromatograms from both tech, uh, the equipments, and at the same retention time we have a signal from uh, ICPMS and a signal from orb trap, maybe we can identify a biomolecule containing this heteroatom. And this kind of coping is uh, not so easy to, to apply or to do, so we wrote a tutorial review about uh, how to do this and uh, how the parameters that we have to optimize. In, and it's already accepted and uh, it's in press. And we, we could uh, understand better this, this coping. And uh, so this multimodal coping can be so uh, applied to the analysis of metallobiomolecules and biomolecules containing heteroatoms. And we have two different kind of approaches that we could apply. For example, the identification of new species without standards called target analysis. And also uh, the discovery of an unknown species without standards uh, with the identification of a novel novel biomolecules called non-target analysis. And this kind of approach, this two one, uh, this two, both of them can be applied, uh, for example, in these studies with essential elements, the identification of metalloenzymes and metalloproteins or metabolites, with the toxic elements binding biomolecules, with the discovery of novel species through the metabolic pathway, and also, for example, in studies involving metallodrugs, the use of metallic, metallic ions and metallodrugs in the biological system <laughs> to treat diseases. And the main advantages of this kind of coupling is the identification of a chemical species without the use of standards, uh, the simultaneous qualitative analysis of diverse biomolecules containing these heteroatoms, and the identification, uh, maybe, of novel species never, never reported before. And uh, I would like to introduce you uh, these, uh, this uh, specific term <coughs> that is proposed by Professor Marco Zezia Ruda, without some collaborators, in 2022. 
that can be defined as the study or evaluation of chemical species present in a sample using omic approach, and then the speciome can be defined as the entirety of chemical species in a sample evaluated through omics-based strategies. And I have here a, a, a good example of this speciomics approach, where I have the choline, that is a compound in occurring in living tissues and important in the synthesis and transport of lipids. And for example, I have here three different chemical species of choline, the acetylcholine, where I have the main structure and uh, binding the acetyl here, and phosphocholine, also a, a other species of choline, and arsenocholine, where the arsenic uh, is in the local of replacing uh, the nitrogen in the center of this molecule. So then I have here a good example of speciomics approach. And now I am going to present to you some results about this project, the identification of biomolecules containing heteroatoms in the soybean somatic embryogenesis. That is a biotechnological study. Uh, soybean is very important for Brazil because we have the biggest producer of this culture. And we are going to study how to improve the this culture. And so the somatic embryogenesis is a process where a plant somatic cell can be differentiate to a totipotent embryonic stem cell that has the ability to give rise to an embryo under appropriate conditions. And this new embryo can further develop into rolling plants. So it's a process where I have plant production of plants in vitro without seeds. And uh, in the case of soybean plant tissue, uh, we have uh, a soybean plant, we have a tissue, for example, a stem or a cotyledon or a leaf, and is, is placed in a cultural medium, contains some uh, different uh, nutrients and also or hormones, and embryogenic structures or callus are formed, that is this cluster of uh, plant cells. Here I have the steps involving in this process, so we have the expansion donor that is an entire plant, and then we take a segment, for example, the cotyledon, and put in this cultural median, and uh, then we start the the tissue differentiation into this cluster of cells that is the callus, and then if you continue this process, we have the mature callus, and then we start to uh, to start to grow up the, these plants, uh, soybean plants, in these callus and the in vitro multiplication and I ha we have uh, a lot of entire plants that is weak, equal the expansion donor. And the main advantages of this biotechnological process is the micropropagation in vitro and mass production of plants and also this type of cells is uh, used as a model system for understanding the physiological, biochemical, and molecular biological events occurring during plant embryo develop. And we can understand the, the, the plant behavior studying these kind of cells. Here I have the configuration of the online coupling. Uh, we use the helix as column, and here the sample volume injection, and some parameters that we have to optimize in ICPMS and also in Orbitrap to do this. And uh, now some results uh, involving the soybean callus. Here I have the chromatograms from both techniques, ICPMS in black color and uh, in red color you have the chromatogram obtained in Orbitrap for boron, copper, sodium, co cobalt, potassium and nickel. And in some regions of the chromatograms we have uh, the overlapping of the peaks, so in maybe in these retention times, we can identify these biomolecules containing, containing the hetero heteroatom. Uh, also other elements, and today I will uh, show you some examples of phosphor, uh, phosphorus, uh, biomolecules containing phosphorus and sulfur. Here I have an example uh, of sulfur-containing metabolite that we identified in the sample. 
at the retention time around 0.9 uh, minutes. And here I have MS1 data. And the comparison of experimental mass and simulated mass with an error less than 5 ppm. And also, finally, the MS2 data spectra, where I can confirm that it is this biomolecule, because I have the precursor I, the mass uh, charge ratio here, and also the fragments. So this biomolecule works over here, and we have the exact fragments in the MS2 spectra. Here, other examples of sulfur-containing biomolecules that we identify in the sample. The molecular formula, experimental mass, co in comparison with the simulated mass, the exact retention time, and the, the confirmation with MS2. Uh, here, uh, an example of a uh, uh, species of choline, lysophosphatidylcholine, we had that has uh, phosphor in this structure. And also uh, the, the MS2 data showing show the fragments proving that it is this biomolecule that we found. And here also an examples of untargeted analysis where we have the discovery of novel biomolecules, for example, containing sulfur and or phosphorus, never reported before in the literature. Here I have an example of a biomolecule containing phosphor and sulfur. And this is unpublished data, but it, what we confirm it with the MS2 spectra and the fragments. And some perspectives about this project is the better identification of these biomolecules binding all the elements, uh, and also the addition of golden and silver nanoparticles in the soybean cows in comparison to control. We, we add these uh, nanoparticles and try to have some benefits, for example, the most uh, development of the plant and the, that can grow up uh, more quickly than uh, others and the, also the production of uh, secondary metabolites. Uh, I also would like to, to show you some uh, results about the on-target analysis. Uh, the example of the investigation of novel organocenicos species in the marine liver sample. Uh, the problem of arsenic in the sea turtle is that this animal is very uh, susceptible to the bioaccumulation of toxic elements, for example, arsenic or cadmium or lead and mercury because of it, the, its longevity, longevity, low metabolic rate and potential for converting di their diet into biomass. And uh, also the variety diet of the animal, so uh, it could uh, eat uh, some algae and also other uh, marine animals during his life and, uh, and means that this, its arsenic intake Spend multiple trophic levels, and then we could uh, discover novel arsenic species that can still be revealed in these animals. Here, only the exact uh, local sampling that we, we have we found this animal dead, but the carcass is in good condition. And at Jurea Beach, Iguapsit, São Paulo State, in Brazil. And we did some previous uh, analysis and we found uh, 120 ppm of arsenic in the liver, so it's a lot of arsenic uh, and this animal uh, prob probably can uh, need to eliminate this arsenic, so uh, the, the organisms try to, to generate organocenicals to eliminate all this arsenic that is very toxic. And the results, so uh, how is the strategy, what is the strategy that we, we use to discover novel arsenic species in this sample? So we search uh, through the MS2 fragmentation. 
for characteristic fragments of organocenicals, for example, for example, these these fragments. And during the searches, a precursor ion of mass ratio, uh, mass charge ratio of 193 was observed in two different retention times. Here uh, I have uh, the high resolution mass spectrometry base peak with all the biomolecules that we extracted of the sample. And here we extract the extraction ion chromatogram of the exact this mass that uh, we found in two different retention times. So they have, they are different biomolecules with the same mass charge ratio, uh, but with different uh, polarities. And then here we have the uh, is, is, uh, ICPMS chromatogram with the signal, transient signal of arsenic where we have the match of the signal here with a peak of arsenic, so we can confirm that it is an organocenical. And try to identify these two different species. We have two different MS2 spectra with the same precursor ion, but with different, uh, in this color, with different uh, fragments. <coughs> And in red color, we have the same fragments, but we have also different fragments here, so we could think that it is different uh, species. And looking for the species uh, uh, in the retention time around 23 minutes, we saw that it is the arsenobetane 2, first reported for Francesconi in 2000. Uh, we confirm it uh, with the MS2 spectra. But looking for the uh, species around four minutes, we can see that it is uh, completely different, the, the fragments. And we try to propose a novel uh, structure for this species, for this organocenical. Uh, and we saw that it is very similar to arsenobetane, that is the main arsenic species found, organocenical found in marine animals, but uh, it, they have a different mass ratio, charge ratio, with a, a methyl radical. So we propose this structure for this novel arsenic species discovered, never reported before in the literature. And this is an example of a novel biomolecule binding a heteroatom that we could discover with this kind of coping. Uh, and then we did the uh, synthesis of the methyl arsenic betaine with an um, official method. And we confirm that we synthesized this species comparing with the the methyl arsenobetane are found in the sample with the synthesized methyl arsenobetane, the MS2 spectra. And we did a fortification uh, of the sample to, to, to see that, to confirm that we found <coughs> the biomolecule and finally the validation using the proton nuclear magnetic resonance in MR that we could confirm that is this structure <coughs> and we wrote a short communication about this novel species that is in under review and as conclusion we can see that we can apply this multimodal coping uh, with different kind of samples trying to identify these biomolecules binding the heteroatoms and also the potential to identify novel biomolecules with this, this coping. Here uh, is the group involving the, this multimodal coping. The professor Marco Aurelius Azerruda is here. And uh, he is organizing these two events in Brazil that we be in November 2025 the Brazilian meeting on chemical speciation and he will symposium and he would like to invite you to participate. And thank you so much for your attention and I'd like to thank you the 
financial institutions too. Okay. Thank you very much, Lilian, for this excellent talk. Um, this is a very, very new combination in analytical chemistry and is now entering uh, the biochemical um, uh, spectrum. So I open the session for questions if you have. I have one. Um, Lilian, I see a lot of potential in phosphoproteomics. This is the reason because I, I uh, invite you to present this new combination here today. Um, we were discussing yesterday uh, with one colleague who is somewhere in the, uh, there, yeah, about phosphoproteomics and about the difficulty in quantifying in an absolute manner phosphopeptides. Um, and so they also use ICPMS and, and then electrospray MS. So, but he was. Uh, it seems that there is a kind of difficulty because when you deal with complex samples, uh, make the quantification can be tricky. Yes. Okay, so can you comment on that and if you can visualize any type of approach in which we can combine, uh, we can use this combination? Yes, it, there is a poten uh, potential, but in, in such complex samples, for example, it's difficult to, to make the, the quantification. But I think it's possible because we can uh, quantify the phosphor, total phosphorus, for example, in, using ICPMS, and then try to to quantify the the species, the biomolecule containing phosphorus. But I think it's uh, it's there is a kind of uh, we have to optimize these conditions to to make this. Um, now we are going to try only the, the not the quantification, only the, the identification. Okay, so I think we have plenty of time to do things together.